So we do an oblique twist. Knees and feet together. Gliding the shoulders down the back. Making sure the abdominals feel like they're weaving and descending deep into the body cavity. Nice exhalation breathing each time. Deepening flexion, making sure that if you're not if you are tapping, you're not like letting your upper body fall back. You're staying in deep flexion without pulling the elbows. Killer. If you need to, you can hug your knee into the chest. After that, you can do a bridge. You can rotate the knee. You can open the opposite arm. On the floor, you're going to have more room to expand and explore this. This is nice holding on to the shoulder rest above if you have a reformer at home and then you feel like you're going to fall off. I'm actually not going to fall off. You'll see it on the other side. This is actually really nice. But you can rotate that knee all the way across and if you're on the floor, you can hold the arm out to the T or to the 12. So here it would be the three in the clock or the 12 in the clock. That is a nice stretch, wow. Okay, and then when you see it on the other side, you see me hug the knee into the chest and then hold the shoulder rest above and then bring the knee up across. The back is much tighter over here, but the shoulder felt looser. Let that open in time. Again, I can hold that nine o'clock. So if I'm lying in a clock, my arm is open to the nine. 12 is above my head. Six is to my feet. Three is to the right. Yeah, because the back is tighter on this side. But I'm getting this nice expansion here through the rib cage. And then as I take it back to center and then I stretch everything, anything you can hold, a couch, a coffee table, just getting that traction is going to be so good for you got the itchy bajibbies. Okay, so we're going to put some ankle weights on and do our sideline ankle weight stuff. It's optional, but it's so good for you. Now with the ankle weights on, it's pretty challenging on some of my glute work. And I need my extensor pad. Maybe I'll keep my toning balls close by. We'll see. That's going to be for later. First, we're going to be lying all the way down. So the different variations, bottom ribs always lifted off the mat. We're going front leg and we're exhale back leg kick. Pretty challenging. It's gonna be your hardest one because you're, if you're on the floor, it's not as hard, but here, like the weight, the weight wants to pull you down to the ground. And the fact that I'm on a reformer, if you're doing this here, there's more gravitational pull off the machine behind you. Floor won't be as bad. So like if I was to lower the leg down below the carriage, I'd be working so much more to bring it back up to neutral. I'm gonna keep it isometrically the height I want. I'm gonna inhale, flex the leg in front. I'm gonna exhale, point and extend the leg behind. I'm gonna work on the bottom ribs. My bottom ribs are gonna to wanna to 
press into the ground. We really want them up. Flex, inhale. Exhale, point and extend. So that's a, make sure you're in the middle. That is a frontal leg. God, with this ankle weight on it, it is intense. If it is too much to go frontal, because you're working all the lateral hip muscles as the leg is moving forward, which would be sagittal, but you're lying down, so I believe it's got transverse in there too. And then point and extend the leg behind you. You want to avoid rolling at the body here. Now, if you just go ahead and lift and lower here, yeah, still really challenging, but not as hard rotationally to the body, which is why I think there is transverse because we're sidelined. Um, Elizabeth, I watch for your head kind of being forward. Keep that neck nice and long. Okay, take a break from that. So if front back leg doesn't work for you, you can always just do lift and lower. I won't teach the double Z, but I've got the double Z on Instagram. I've got some videos coming back on Instagram that I've already taught. We're gonna do your side bridge next. We're gonna come to your forearm here. We're gonna go into side bridge, clam, come back down, which feels like a resistance to my actual hip joint. Then I'm gonna lower back down. I'm gonna make sure that my body's not coming forward to the camera. I'm gonna go up. Okay, if I end up rotating my head towards the camera the entire time, my neck's gonna hurt. I wanna make sure I'm not pulling my head. I'm keeping it on the top of my spine. If my legs start to get away from me, I'm gonna recoil them in, clam. If my neck gets tired, which it is a little on this side, this is my harder side. What a lot of people will want to do here is kind of sink into this. So we want to keep the legs reaching down, keeping it nice and open. That clam really, really is intense um, with the ankle weights on. It's nuts. I don't, I don't, it's crazy. I didn't think it would be. We'll do one more. This side was much harder for me. We didn't even do the other side yet, but that's okay. That's why I held the head, but that's part of the rehab from the injury. We can sit up into a mermaid. You could do some rotation, both sides. Oh, I got a nice crack in my back. You can do some side bending. to get a deeper stretch. You can also rotate these, round and flattening out the back. And then coming back to side, coming out of it. Now we're gonna go to the forearm or full arm variation. So if you're full arm, we did these the other day. We extend the leg out, we lift. We hamstring curl, we extend it out, and we lower back down. I'm gonna do it more intensely to the glute by going down to the forearm. Straighten that knee. Here's the thing. When you curl the heel in to meet the butt, you don't wanna drop the quad. So that would actually You'd be that would actually be dipping into the hip flexor for that. So I want you to keep isometric open here. Glutes the entire time. Lift. Keep glute active. Right? If the leg drops, the glute relaxes and the hip flexor is drawing down. Gravity is really just doing that. So we want to avoid that. That's how we're working the muscles. 
Avoid like shifting and leaning. My body wants to really lean to the left. Come on, Eileen. That's where I sing uh, the trainer song. We had a trainer, Eileen. I trained with her for like 20 years at the club. Really focusing on that straight kneecap. So you can get to here, which is, see that? Where I can really reach it. Really bracing into this right arm to shift my body to the right so that I am not killer. So that I am not leaning to, come on Eileen. We're gonna try one more here and then hold and pulse. You will feel your supporting leg a ton. Two and one. Straighten that leg out. Finish it. Lower it. Slide it in. With the fives, it's crazy. I'm gonna do a little child's pose because I need it, but you can always do a down dog because you wanna maybe stretch out your hamstring. I'm gonna do a Madonna and I have an elevation of the extensor pad here. And then I did a cat and dog child's pose variation. Working on stretching that back. And then coming to the other side for your glute extension. Okay, before you, before you start, set up, make sure you're hip width, make sure you're not leaning. And we extend, we lift, we curl, we lengthen and lower. Same thing, I'm not lifting, curling and dropping. Okay, that would be just hamstring and hip flexor. So by staying with the leg up, curling, keeping the quad and hip flexor stable, and I'm truly using the hamstring to curl the heel to the butt while my glute is continuing to extend. That's the key. Your glute is working extension. You're getting a double glute and a glute medius. Really focusing on that straight knee. That was my hardest part of my injury is to bring back that straight knee. Couple other thoughts. Really one thought here is that sometimes people kind of cave in. You see how I just did nothing there? I can just leave my leg there. I'm only coming into about a right angle so I don't overthrow my heel to my buttock. Bracing through the forearm, trying not to come on Eileen. Much harder on this side. If you need a break, you can come up. At least it's harder for me. We want to get to eight without shifting. Two and one. We stay in that last two and one. Watch for the head dropping, keep it neutral. And then I'm gonna pulse. And then I can look, no, straighten out that leg. Sorry, I just wanted to rest me on this side so hard for me. Lower, Ugh. After that injury, guys, the whole shoulder girdle, even on the side bridge, it all meant the same thing there. Was so hard on that left side. So we go into that child pose, Madonna. Cat and dog. You can also do threading the needle. And I 
can show you in more videos how to explore the child's pose or any other variation you want. Boy, my legs feel extremely tired. Does that make sense? So, either way is fine. And we mix it up anyway. Front leg and back leg kick. God, this is so much stronger over here. Bottom ribs, that means space. Locate underneath the side rib, frontal and back. Again, not too hip flexy for the bottom leg. Soft bend. You can even work to straight. Like this leg could be straight. It's a lot harder because you have less of a balance point for your lower body. Good. I'm pulling my head, I can tell. I can just check it in my camera angle. So keeping that head down, which is why I don't work out a lot with classes, but I am doing a demo here, demo of exercise with a smaller class. This is what we work on in class every week. Flex in the front, point in the back. Now it's funny, even though I'm more stable on this side, this leg goes rogue. It doesn't do what it's supposed to because of the old injury. Yeah, now you're going to your side bridge. Couldn't even do anymore. But on the other side, just to keep it consistent, if you couldn't do front leg, we kept it this way. Watch for sickling of your foot. I know I'm like kind of out of the camera here. Watch for sickling down or turning out. I mean, turning out is like a big pet peeve of mine. You want to be able to have a shoe on the side of the foot. And if you tip in, the shoe falls forward. If you tip out, the shoe falls back. They're different muscles. That's a they're different muscles. Good rest. So, side bridge, killer, sit, hold. Um, the thing with this here, with the, I set it on the other side, is that the ankle weights, it's crazy. It anchors you in some respect, but it doesn't. It, it like forces you to work that hip. It's nuts. The other side was easier. Not on the side bridge. This side bridge is easier. But the hip rotation, I had no problem opening up the left hip on that side, side bridge. Then you're going into mermaid when you need to. Trish. I really tried to breathe there and really rotate from my glute rotators. You've got six deep lateral rotators of the hip. You only ever hear about the piriformis. The glute maximus is also a deep, I don't know if it's deep, but it's a rotator of the hip. It's not a deep. And then there's the germellus, inferior and superior. Good, you guys are going to the mermaids. Obturatus internus, internus and externus. That would be four. And then piriformis is five. Maybe glute max is considered. I gotta look up the sixth. There's supposed to be six deep lateral. But I don't know if glute maximus is one of them. I'll look it up afterwards. Again, if you need to hold your head, I didn't need to on this side, but by the last repetition, I was like, oh, I need to hold my head. And then, but I'm done. I'm over. It's over. It's over. Rest. And then. We went to some rotation. And we did some rotation with cat stretching, like your mermaid with rotation. I was really drawing in my stomach. And imagine someone's behind you and giving you a big hug right here. They also say put the mini ball right here. So if I wasn't getting a hug from behind, right, I'd be maybe flat, but someone is holding my stomach and pulling me back. And with clients, I sometimes go and sit around them and hug them back. You'll feel a nice stretch. Then we also did some side. Okay, and then we can go into spinal extension. We haven't been there. If you want to do a double hamstring curl there, you can.
just finishing out. We would, you can call whatever you want, knees and feet together. Let's do below the belt and then chest press combo. You can hold an isometric glute with your knees and feet together. It's up to you if you want to go up down. I tend to just isometrically hold my hips, but you can have this vary it. You can vary it. You can modify it. <laughs> you can change it. With that lifted lower, turn it, open wide. Now, the other day, I did some bench pressing with my hips down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go down here because it's a little harder in the final phase with my hips down. Then I'm gonna go back up, and then I'll isometrically hold. I'm gonna slowly resist it coming down. And in. So it's a little harder to send the weights to pressure down, keeping them open, don't bring them in towards the breath. I'm not resting completely, I'm actually in a gentle hover. My arms are like a goal post. Zipping in the abdominals. Yeah, it is harder to go down on the chest press. I just tried without it. So it's harder to go down with control and then up. And then I like to pulse my hips with the weights on the thighs. My knees and feet were together this entire time because I am working on that concept to work more inner thigh. Two and one. And when you're ready, ah, killer. The weights at the ankles, the weights at the hips, just everything is pulling you down to the ground. So you're really focusing on not having that happen. Um, and you just feel so much. I couldn't even pulse longer than that. The endurance is getting there, but boy, it's still trickling back. But what we're gonna um, finish off with, with the ankle weights off, is any amount of reverse ab. You can use, so I'll show you how you can use heavy ankle weights, or heavy weights. These are my tens. I can put them over my head, they are rested on the ground, and then I can use them to roll my knees right over the eyes. If they're popping off the ground, they're too light. <sighs> really focusing on that point where it feels like I would pick up the weight, but I don't. And then <sighs> rolling off. But you can also use an anchor. Um, I think I'll show that. I'm just going to let these fall away. I can use my shoulder rests. It gives me a much stronger anchor. I'll, I feel my core way more with my with my weights, I'll tell you that. I feel more stretch and flexibility to my back and better execution of the roll up when I hold on to something really firm. This could be your couch, your coffee table. You don't wanna open the legs too much. You could put a ball behind the back of the thighs to see if we can get that going. Try to avoid shifting. I am starting to feel a lot more core after doing a couple with the ankle weights and then here, because you can see I stay over and I focus on squeezing the glutes and really holding the abs. 
Some people will do some pulses towards the ceiling for a little bit more ab work. As long as you don't get any back pain there, slowly resist, 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 resist. Resist is where I feel that deeper layer abdominal. Perfect. Then it can go into any amount of V-sits. If you are modifying V-sits, you could just do a half roll up. Half roll up looks like this. It's an unsupported neck, but you could have your hands behind the head or you could roll 